Today's lesson is on price to earnings ratios and we're going to talk a little bit about today's stock market from a valuation perspective. Now you've been hearing from folks like me and perhaps analysts on TV that stocks are trading at a level or at a multiple we haven't seen since the early 80s. Well after today's presentation you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But let's start with price to earnings ratio. Let me tell you how that works. We have hypothetical company A. Let's say it trades today at $10 per share and that it has a market capitalization of $10 billion, which therefore means that there are 1 billion shares outstanding. 1 billion shares times the price gives you the market cap. And let's say that at the end of its year, company A earns a net $1 billion. Now we need to convert that to a per share basis. So we have a billion dollars in earnings, a billion shares, therefore $1 per share in company earnings. Okay. Price is 10, earnings per share are 1, price to earnings ratio or the PE of 10 to 1 or 10. That folks is how price to earnings ratios are determined. Now everything about companies like Apple trading at $400 per share and analysts come out and give it a, a strong buy recommendation when you think my gosh that has to be very expensive. Well, it's not solely based on the price per share, it's actually, it's this, the price per share relative to the per share earnings. Now, it could be that the analyst expects Apple to come in with $40 per share in annual earnings, which would give it a price to earnings ratio of 10, which probably for a big tech company like Apple, uh, that would be historically a very low PE. And that's how consequently we end up with these price targets, or five, uh, five to six hundred dollars per share, because that more accurately, historically speaking, reflects what the company is actually earning. Okay. So what about the overall market? What about this notion that stocks are trading at, at a level that we haven't seen since the early 1980s, essentially another real deep recessionary period? Well, they're talking about the overall market again, and generally they're talking about the S&P 500. Now the S&P has been trading at an average PE over the years of about 16. So last night I did the math. I took the level of the S&P, I took the, the consensus earnings estimates for the companies within the S&P, and did the math and came up with a price to earnings ratio of 11 and a half, which obviously is very cheap relative to the historic average. In fact, it's 1980s cheap. Okay. Well, why are stocks so cheap? Well, of course, it's the earnings or concerns over future earnings. It's the market discounting that earnings will not come in at expectations. Okay? That earnings will actually be lower for the reasons that we're reading about in the papers and hearing about on the news. Um, if earnings do come in, however, at expectations or ahead of expectations, and perhaps more importantly, companies give us positive outlooks, well then we should, even in spite of the headlines, see stocks trade a bit higher. Okay? But I have to add folks that stocks can trade at extremes, one or the other, for extended periods of time. We certainly saw it in the late 90s with the technology boom. We had, we had the major averages, particularly the NASDAQ, trading way ahead of their long-term averages. The longer that went on, the more the experts would come out and say, you know, it's different this time, perhaps based on, on the efficiencies that our companies are gaining with all the new technology, that stocks will trade at these higher multiples ad infinitum. Well, of course, as we learned, they proved to be wrong. Well, today's, that, that, that similar crowd today is saying that, you know, today it's a new normal, that for a variety of reasons, stocks are going to trade at, at well below average long-term PEs. I suspect that ultimately they'll be proved wrong as well. But folks, in the meantime, we have to put all this into a, into a long-term investor perspective. As we talked about in, in my last lesson on portfolio rebalancing, what we really want to do is not get too caught up in, in the market, really at one extreme or the other, but to continue to take advantage of it. And with rebalancing, what happens is when the market's down and consequently we're below our target allocation to stocks, well, we jump in to buy and uh, just to buy back to the, to the target. And if we do it today, we end up at buying in at a level on a price to earnings basis that we haven't seen since the early 1980s. Doesn't mean that stocks can't go lower or that stocks can't stay there for an extended period of time. All it means that at these levels, boy, they do look very compelling.
But again, it's all going to be on earnings and what the economy does going forward. Thanks for watching.